Okay, hello everyone. Mm, thank you for the organizer for inviting me to present here. Uh, this presentation may be a little, a little different than the ones before, also in the sense that it's an, it's an ongoing project. Um, it's work in progress, but we think it's important for people to be exposed for the potential of dating boreals, especially in our region where, as we heard from others, it's not so easy to find um, suitable bones for dating. Okay, so when speaking about the Intermediate Bronze Age, it's important to notice uh, the big span, uh, the time span that we have currently, according to all our datings so far, and it's getting more and more clear that since the 2500 BC until 2000, or even a little later, we have uh, dates from Intermediate Bronze Age. If we're talking about the burials, there is a big difference between the early bronze two and three, as we seen the Bidilan spoke about that, that there is not many documented burial sites. Main ones are Jericho and Babed Ra, and the others are usually single burials in uh, single uh, caves in various places. Once we come and look at the intermediate bronze age, there is suddenly burst in the number of uh, tombs. Uh, here I put on map, I think there are about 60 of them, but these are the major ones. There are a lot more. And this is something that we want to learn something about the culture. So we're looking for other means and further means to do it. If we are trying to talk about the main burial types of the IBA, so the most common ones uh, are shaft tombs. There are two main types. One uh, is communal burial that is usually in a, a multiple chambers, like we see in type A here. Uh, B is the shaft tomb that is for a single burial. There are many, many of those, of course. And here, the chambers is uh, usually a single one with a um, small one, meter to two meter diameter. So these two A and B types construct uh, well over 90% of IBA girls found so far. And uh, some less common ones are cis tombs that we see here in number C, and dolmens or tumulus that are also in various places. There are some fields of them, but they're not uh, very common. Okay, so when in our research we were looking, uh, we saw the potential of doing radiocarbon chronology uh, on, on burials uh, from various reasons. Uh, the pottery typology of the IBA, though it's been progressing as we talk and there are more and more uh, work and uh, understanding and um, eventually it will be even a stronger relative chronology to, to work with. But currently when you find the tomb, it's not enough to go and say, oh, it's a very early one, early uh, IBA. And so most of them are, they look the same. The pottery is very common and it's hard to tell by the pottery. On the other hand, skeletons from a single face burial, what, like we find a lot, some of them articulated. It's a perfect uh, context for absolute dating. And if we take it together with, the, um, with what we find in the tomb, pottery and such, then we may, have, may help uh, to increase the resolution of the relative chronology. Collagen extracted from bones is a proven valid way to source to radiocarbon dating. It's been done for decades. And some question that we thought we might answer, um, is the burial topology, can it become a chronological marker? Say one type is early and then they started another type of burial. So that's one option to check. Uh, when did it start, the tradition? Did it start right away 
um, as the EB3 ended, or was did it take a few a few decades or so until they started, or centuries? And communal burial that we find uh, in the IBA does it present a single point of time that they buried, they saw, sealed it, and that's what we find, or maybe it's a prolonged action. And we have a lot of uh, burial ground with single uh, graves, and but hundreds of them in one field. What does it say? Does it tell us that there is maybe a lot of years of accumulation, or maybe there was a big uh, temporal site around it, they buried, and then they moved away in a very short period? So all of these questions we are looking at. But there are also a lot of challenges when you go and date, uh, try to date from burials, from IBA burials. Um, the material itself, the best for radiocarbon, the easiest short-lived material like seeds and, and reeds, small reeds. Um, so on charred remains, either they disappeared or hardly collected. We don't have them from uh, these burials. Charred remain. Um, there is a chance or there, we must see that they are in situ because burial tend to fill up during time and water goes in and you have to make sure that you find something, a charred remain and it's really in situ and didn't go in later. And also if it's wood, of course, you have the old wood effect that it might indicate a time that is before the construction of this tomb. Bones and teeth which is our, the subject of our work. Um, in most excavated IBA burials in Israel, they are poorly preserved. We heard about it before. It's hard to find um, good quality bones with, um, with, that we can actually date. And also another issue is that they are not usually not collected, especially not in the last few decades in Israel. So looking at all that, we, we developed a method uh, in our research and also before in the archeological, in the center here in uh, the Kimmel Center in Weizmann, uh, how to best date uh, bones, especially from this area where there are not a lot of them are preserved well. We focus for, on uh, clear IBA context burials and we developed analytical procedure to get the best suitable samples in order to reduce the noise and the outliers from such dating. So I'm going fast over the procedure just to give you a sense of the, there's a lot of work involved. For each, each bone that we take, we sample, we analyze the mineral fraction for its preservation using IR spectrometry and also splitting factor ratio calculations and other stuff. And we figure out the best ones to try and work. Then we go and um, check. We actually dissolve the mineral fraction with acid. And what we should have, it should leave us with the collagen, that is the other substance in bones. And that's the datable part and we check the, the quality in the, and to see if we have good quality collagen uh, as a pre-screening. This is before we actually do the processing. And from that pre-screening, we are left with about 15% of the samples that we sampled. Uh, and we go further to the second step, which is the collagen processing itself. Uh, we do a collagen extract, which is a Siri, of procedures involving chemistry and filtration. And we get the pure collagen at the end of that. We go through a series of checks to verify that the collagen is pristine and it's uh, good for dating, which I'll see a little example later. Um, it's also involved the infrared spectrometry and percentage of carbon and carbon versus nitrogen ratio, all of these has to fit what we expect in collagen. 
from that, we actually in our in our um, process we we got 72 percent success of what we extracted and that one goes into dating in the ams in the dreams where the carbon lab laboratory here in the weizmann institute and i want to show just to for illustration here we saw infrared spectrometry so this spectrum in the middle is actually the of uh, collagen, of pure collagen, and um, of the standard. So this is a reference, and on top of it, you can see a bone that from our research that um, after dissolving the mineral fraction, we got the collagen, and we can see that the collagen is very much matching the, the spectrum of the pure collagen. So this one we actually dated, and it was successful. And to see the other side of it, which most bones re resulted in not so good uh, spectrum. Here we see the red one on the bottom. This is from a, another grave, very close to the one that yielded good uh, collagen. And you can see yeah. it's different, totally different. And uh, it gives you, it shows that this one is not a good candidate and we did not proceed with that for dating. All in all, if we looked, we sampled 274 IBA bones and we succeeded to date all the way through 26 of them. This is our report. This is the assemblage that we dated. And now going into the results to the sites we did, um, just mentioning if it, I failed to do it before, until now, there was not, not even one uh, published uh, tomb of IBA tomb that was, I mean, not even one dated tomb by, uh, by uh, radiocarbon from the IBA. And we actually uh, succeeded to do it in a few. I'm showing here four, there's, there's more. Um, Jabal Karkir, Jabal Karkir here in the Hebron Hills. We have Yahud in the coastal plain. We have Kibbutz Azorea in the Jezreel Valley and Sheikh Donon, which is a little north of Akwa Akra. So these are the four ones we will look at. I'm going fast now over the actual um, sites to show what, we, what happened. First of all, Jabba Kakir is a site that was excavated 50 years ago by Deaver. And um, over there, one, one thing that was done already, the human moves were studied and published by Patricia Smith. And we actually, she helped us in locating stored bones from, uh, we located, we looked at one specific tomb from there which was um, sealed and it had nine individuals identified. So we know there is it's a multiple burial with at least nine individuals. And here we see, this is the drawing of this tomb. And we succeeded in dating five different individuals. So we took um, bones that, we identif that were identified as different uh, people and we dated succeeded to date five. The next uh, place I'm showing is uh, Yehud. There, uh, there are over 100 IBA shaft tombs excavated by Yehuda Gobrin. And most burials were of single person, a set of burial goods along each of them. It was in uh, Hamba soil, so the preservation was not good. Uh, we succeeded to date 14 tombs out of 52 sample tombs. So that was our main um, burial site that we tried to date, and it was hard to get results here. The third one, Hazoea, also a very, it was excavated in the 60s, so it's almost 60 years now by Meyerhoff as a Meyerhoff. And 
we located several boxes with uh, stored from this tomb with bones. And uh, actually, they even have their location of the bones um, marked. So we even know each bone you can see here with the red is the, we marked, uh, I marked the location of the two bones that were successfully dated. They were in the same tomb, tomb number three, and, uh, but in different rooms. The last one we saw is Sheikh Danon. Uh, that was a salvage excavation done by Zachovitz. Uh, two rectangular rooms. One we see that's the big one in the front, and behind there was a small chamber and another room that you can see the opening to it. Um, there were at least 10 individuals scattered around these rooms. We took a few of the long bones and we succeeded to date three of them. Okay, so saying that, we can jump into the actual dating. And uh, the results, I'll put here the IBA timeline to make it easier for us to see the relation. And it is a, a small sample site relatively to the vast number of burials we have. But also in this small site, we already see that the sites are from different regions and the date ranges of this uh, random type of, uh, of uh, sampling, uh, it goes throughout the IBA timeline. You see on the top from Sheikh Danone, we can see early, earlier burials that are either 25th or 24th century BC, uh, later, at the 23rd, there are a lot of burials. And 22nd, also we can see here. And even 21st century and maybe further, but at least 21st century BC. So we have throughout the IBA and we can, from this, what we can say from here until we have something for more evidence is that there is type of parallel chronology of the IBA settlements and the IBA burials. It didn't start and it's not different. It's the same culture and with the same timelines. Um, the IBA burial tradition seems to be a fundamental part of the IBA culture from its beginning until the end. And if we're looking at, um, I'm checking my time, sorry. Okay, I still have time. If you're looking at the uh, specific items, so the, the com communal uh, burial tradition can be seen in two of our location. One is in Sheikh Danon on top. The other, the second one is in Jebel Karkir on the bottom. So we can see in both of them that the burial in, in Again, it's in the same uh, room, the same chamber here and the same chamber down here. So in the same chamber, we can see burials that are apart with, by hundreds of years. Uh, in Sheikh Danone, at least 100 or more years apart. And in um, Jabal Karkir, it's even more outstanding. You can see it from at least the 20 third century BC all the way to the 21st and further. So here we have 200 to 300 years of burial within the same chamber. And as I told you, we actually made sure that these are different people. These are different individuals. And saying that, so we can try to, What we can learn from this, that uh, there is a hundred years of communal burial practice, same burial chamber, and this suggested traditional tribe or family oriented community with long lasting burial tradition. What jumps to mind right away, and this is, this we need to check, is there is a challenge here because how can we explain this long term of one place with so long tradition, it's not even one site, but it's one chamber. It's people that recognize and know how to go back and, um, and go into the same place all the, over and over again. And to explain the dichotomy between the local long lasting burial practice 
and the actually a firmer looking villages in the vicinity of those burial grounds, if any. So this is something that we really have to put our minds to looking forward. If we're looking at the, the type of burial that are single burials in a, um, in a multiple uh, burial or a site with hundreds of burials, uh, mostly single like we see here, this we have in Yahud. And if we look at it, we can also see here that there is a continuity. You can see a range, and this is again random um, because some we could date, so others we couldn't. And from those we could date, you can see all through the actually dates goes from well within the 23rd century into well into the 22nd century. So there is like about at least 100 years of continuous burial in Yahud. And I put here the two um, pictures because actually they are, each of them reflects different timeline. One is of the earlier burials, the second is from the later burials, and you can see how similar the, the way they did it was the same, um, they lay out the same way. Um, the assemblage is very similar throughout this at least 100 plus years. So we can see that there is a continuation. People were there and they knew the place and they kept on coming. Another angle I want to show, and this is a, a partial view of, it's a, the central part of this um, cemetery. Um, here I marked in brown the tombs that we sampled, but we could not get sufficient uh, material for dating. You can see it's the majority. We, but we did go all over what we could, and those didn't give us any signs uh, to date. Uh, when we're looking, the green ones are the more, the earlier burials in terms of radiocarbon results, and the yellow ones are later ones. And if we look at these two uh, colors, we can see a tendency of green ones are at the west or right, and this is the west side of the cemetery, and the yellow ones are at the east side, which can, can um, suggest um, distribution and expansion and people knowing where they, uh, like, like a planning of this cemetery, expanding it to the east when uh, there was less and less place to bury. Okay, so to summarize, First of all, and this is important, I want to, to share with everybody that uh, it's possible to date bones, even from that time and from this area. It does require high quality control and a lot of work, but it's worthwhile. And please take it into consideration when you see a, a potential or a, a potential place to do it. Mm -hmm. Uh, IBA burials, we do see, according to the data we have now, uh, that it does seem to cover around 500 years, like the settlement, and it's an integral part of the um, IBA culture. And we see long-term cultural memory preserved in the burial customs of the IBA. What we can talk and can see for the future, suggest anyway, is first of all, uh, burial topologies, we didn't, we weren't able uh, to date any systems because there were none available at this uh, time that we did the research. And same thing goes to Dom, and we heard that they are very hard to find there any bones. Um, but if in the future, if we'll find, we can then compare the dates between the various types and topologies of, of IBA burials and maybe get some conclusions, chronological conclusions. Another thing that we can certainly do is uh, join the burial pottery assemblage with the absolute date of the same place and increase the relative chronology potential and um, by that help 
you know, um, to get better resolution for IBA fines. Okay, so by this, I end. Thank you very much.